Alright, so again, this is part two of the video. Um, what we were going over at the end of that one, these three wires here, all your uh, by Xenon relays, uh, or we'll have the three, a single beam relay, we'll just have a red and a black, so it'll be a little easier for you to know. Um, now, we don't go over again in this video which one's which on the different bulb sizes, but we do have a uh, download um, on the tech support page that'll go over the you know different uh, sizes and which one's which. Now, the one you want to tap your resistor into is the one you're having a problem with. For instance, most of the time, um, like with a diesel uh, Dodge truck, for instance, a lot of times the low beam doesn't work, but the high beam works fine. So you want to tap the resistor into the low beam in this case. We're going to call this the low beam for now on this one, just for demonstration purposes. I believe it actually is the low beam, if I'm not mistaken. But um, again, check out the tech support page to be positive on that. Um, you can also test your... Uh, get a, a light tester and just um, plug them into your factory harness and you'll be able to tell which one's which by having the switch on for high or low um, and you'll get your light on whether that you know that wire is hot <laughs> so that's another good way just to be sure <clears throat> so I have this on to here like I, like I showed you earlier all I'm going to do is kind of clamp this up a little bit so that I can also in turn clamp it into there and you see how it's got two little channels that the wires actually sit in you want to make sure they're in those channels on both sides, which mine are, and then you just kind of hold it down. Now this next step we're not going to do, um, but basically all you're going to do is take a pair of pliers and you just want to grab that so that metal pin, that little metal slat there pushes into both wires and that's what allows them to both make contact with each other. And then you flip your little clip down here and it locks in place and you're done. You really don't have to tape this or anything. Um, I recommend do it just to be safe. I tape everything just to be safe. Um, throw you a little bit of electrical tape around it um, just to make sure you don't get anything uh, built up in there or anything like that. Um, once you have this on here, if you notice, you still have your ground wire like we discussed in the uh, previous part of this video. Um, this has always got to be connected to a good solid metal ground with a resistor. Even when we're cutting this extra wire off, it's still got to be on there like that. Again, just like discussed, it gets very hot. We can either use the bracket provided with the hole at the bottom and drilling another hole here. Again, we provide the screws for that as well. Or if you have a very good solid metal piece, you can mount it onto your car yourself onto the metal. Again, just be very cautious, it gets hot. As long as it's on metal though, you'll have no, no worries whatsoever. All right, so we're gonna take this part off here. Now I'm gonna show you one last thing. Um, this is for the capacitors. Typically a resistor eats voltage. Um, so if, if you're overpowering over 13.7 volts um, and the ballast is shutting off, that's when you want a resistor. In some cases you're underpowering. Um, in those cases you usually want the capacitor. The other thing these work for um, is if you have bulb out errors. Typically if it's a bulb out error you probably want a capacitor because um, that, what that's going to do is that's going to interact with your computer system um, to let it know that everything's fine and that your bulb's good to go. And the reason it does that is because it's not getting the right feedback voltage from the HID like it should, and this will make sure that happens. Just like a resistor, we take our ballast, and typically, we have our wire plug right into the ballast. Well, if you notice, our resistor has a female and male side of the same connector. So what we do is pop this off, put one of them into our capacitor, and put the, our, the I'm sorry, the regular adapter wire into the capacitor and the other wire on the capacitor right into your ballast. Your bullets are still going to connect to your bulbs like normal, nothing's going to change there. So all you've done is you've added this capacitor in line between your factory harness essentially and your ballast. And again, that's what's going to allow the correct feedback to your computer um, you know, here and not from the ballast itself which will cause those warnings. Again, it also helps if it's underpowering. Um, capacitor store power um, so that'll help um, to keep enough juice there for this ballast at all times um, and that's pretty much it the only thing you want to be careful of is make sure you mount this good you can use some zip tie uh, a zip tie right through the hole there you can screw that right down um, again you probably want to put this to metal it's not quite as important as the resistor because it really doesn't get hot um, but just just for good measure you more than likely want to put that onto the metal there somewhere inside your engine bay you can also put some double sided tape on the back, pop that on that way since this one doesn't get very hot, that won't be an issue at all. Um, and again, this is going to be mainly used if you have like a bulb out error um, or if you have a little bit of underpowering. Usually it's got to be under 11 volts for that to happen. You can always use a voltmeter to test your factory harness um, to see exactly what voltage you're getting. 
Um, if it's over 13.7, you probably want to order the re resistor. If it's under 11, you probably want to go ahead and get these capacitors. You also want to keep in mind with daytime running lights, these won't always work. Um, for instance, a 2010 Toyota Corolla uses the high beam for a daytime running light. It's a 9 volt line when the daytime running light's on. This will not beef that line up enough to run that HID ballast. We get a lot of flickering in that case. Um, typically, the way to fix that is to pull your fuse on your daytime running lights, um, and you know that'll solve that problem. Again, it's all going to depend on what your voltage is coming out of here, though. Um, if you're getting more than 10 volts, usually this will take solve the problem. More than 10 under 11, um, and then over 13.7, your resistor is going to solve your problem. Uh, and this has been Jake from HIDAutoVision.com. Another video um, on how to do capacitors and resistors. Uh, please check out our tech support page also for more information. Um, and check out our other videos.